Let's see. Okay, so um, is that function linear or quadratic or exponential? Do you know that kind of lingo already? Do you know about that? What's that, What's that function? So let, let me give you the rules. Basically, if you have y equals mx plus b, well, that's not a good way to say that. I mean, that, that is okay, but I, I could say it better. If x is to the first power and y is to the first power, let me just keep it even simpler. They're not going to fool with y. So let's just say if you see x to the first power, it's uh, linear, meaning the graph is some kind of a straight line. Could be up, could be down, whatever. Call that a linear function. If you have x to the second power, that's quadratic. And that's, uh, what's a quadratic uh, graph look like? Does anybody know? <coughs> parabola, yeah, it's a U-shape. Some kind of a U-shape, either up or down. We call that a parabola officially. And um, lastly is exponential. Exponential is, well, I won't make it a 2. I'll make it any kind of number. Any kind of number with X up there. So the whole thing is X is in power. Let me say it this way. X itself is in power. So if X itself climbs into the power zone, things um, happen f real quick. It, it either blows up or sometimes they shrink down if it's uh, exponential decay. But things move fast, either up or down, when they're exponential. So those are the three kinds, th those are the three types we can identify on that. So um, we good with that. Michael, I marked you absent. I don't know why I marked you absent. I know you waved at me and everything. Anyway. All right. So, um, make sense? So, x to the first power, x squared, or x in the power zone, x itself in power. All right. So, what's this one then? 2x minus 2 is linear, isn't it? Right? So, this one is linear. They just have you choose a little option there. Okay. So, they're giving me f of x is 0.9x. Okay, now let me tell you, that's exponential. X is in the power zone, huh? X is climbed up to the power zone, that's exponential, but they're no longer asking me if it's exponential or linear or quadratic. Now they're going to say, okay, okay, it's exponential, but what does it do? What they mean is, does it like go up or does it go down? There's two ways that can happen. Let me show you how that works. Basically, an exponential function is when you have, let's call it, a lot of times they'll use B. You could use any letter. To the X power. Okay. And if, if B is greater than 1, then the thing's going to rise up to the right. For B to the X when B is less than 1, it's going to fall to the right. It's going to go down to the right. That's the difference. It's all about whether the B, the base, B stands for base there, whether the base that has the x on it is bigger than 1 or smaller than 1. They would never make it exactly equal to 1 because that would just be a flat line. So greater than 1, the thing is going to climb. Less than 1, the thing is going to fall. Does that make sense? What? Why? Because if you have a number bigger than 1, say like 2. 2 to the x. Think about what that would do for, with me for a second, guys. As you plug bigger and bigger x numbers into this, is the x-axis, right? Is that on the screen? Yeah. This is the x. As you plug bigger, like 2 to the 1 or 2 to the 2 or 2 to the 3, that's going to get really, really big. 2 to the 3rd is 8. You with me on that? Two, you know, the, the powers mean multiply it that many times. Am I going too quick? That I was skipping. Yeah, basically, that, thing goes, uh, that one goes up to the right. Let me show you. So this one... Because the base is 5, 5 to the 1.4, is, and it has nothing to do with the 1.4. You can just pretend that's not even there. It's really not doing anything. Well, I mean, it's doing something, but nothing about what they're asking anyway. Basically, it's just, hey, it's a, a base bigger than 1, so yeah, the thing's going up to the right. But what does that mean it's doing to the left? That's what I wasn't thinking about. It's coming down for a landing on the left. So it's actually, you're right, the asymptote is the negative x values over here, huh? So the asymptote line is the negative. That's why I wasn't thinking right. Good on that? That's just a weird way for them to ask that, I think. Uh, anyway, but that's how they want to ask it, so who might argue? All right.
Okay, so there we go. So we have f of x. That's the same as y. I'm just going to make it that way. I think it's easier to look at. Fun Do you guys know that? Is that okay? Something you already know? Function values, f of x, g of x, h of x, those are always just y. That's by common agreement in the math world. There's no real reason for that. They just agreed. Just like how why we drive on the right side of the road in North America. They don't do that in Europe, but we've just agreed, right? So that's all there is. So function values, you can just make that a y. That's just by common agreement. So, so what? So that, that means there's y equals 4 to the x. So the base is here. The base is 4. So what, that's exponential, right? The base is bigger than 1. So what does this function do, rise or fall? It's going to rise to the right, isn't it? So it's, it's, it's that one, isn't it? It's not the U shape or the straight line for sure. Good on that. That's just multiple choice. The exam, the, the, we, will, we will not have multiple choice on our exam. Look at the practice exam. You'll see how I will ask these kind of things. I'll follow, I'll follow the format of the practice exam exactly. Different questions, but format will be the same. So I can't remember exactly what I do with graphs, but we'll look at the practice exam. You can look at it before test day. I'll look at it the day before the test. I mean, the meeting point test, we'll review it a little bit. All right, let's go on. Let's take a look. Okay, so, yeah, this one, the base is 1, 6, which is certainly less than 1. So it's going to fall to the right. Now, we have two options, this one or this one, that are possibilities. The other two are, are not it. So it's one of those two. Now, how do you know which one? I mean, how fast is it going to fall? Well... Yeah, it's, it's, it's not this one, um, because it's not going to go below the axis. How do I know that? Well, I'm just thinking to myself, I'm just thinking, look, if I was to make an XY table, right, I was to go, here's the x-axis, right? If I was to go, like, over to the right on the x-axis, like 5 or something, you know, like over here at 5, at 5, right? What, what's that going to be? Well, 1, 6, you know, y will equal, y equals 1, 6 to the x. I'm just plugging in x. Just making a table, plugging in x to the formula. You guys see what I'm doing? That is not negative. It, you can use your calculator. I don't know what it is. It's something small, but it's not negative. So this one's wrong. See how the graph here is coming below the axis? See how that's not right? It's just trying to give you a negative height there. Am I losing you? Do you see that? See right here? how the graph is starting to drop below the x-axis. It can't do that. That'd be a negative y value. It's going to be positive. When you go to the right, when you plug in x values to the right, like 4, 5, 3, 2, 1, anything to the right of, of 0, positive x, right? x is plugged in right here. That's going to be 1, 6 times 1, 6 times 1, 6, you know, 5 times. I don't even know what the number is, but it's not negative, is it? It's for sure not negative. It's not going to dip below. So that's wrong. So then it's for sure this option. Is that good? Questions on that? That's something you're con somewhat comfortable with, looking at graphs and thinking about making x, y charts, you know, right? As you go to the right, you're plugging in bigger and bigger x values, right? Remember that kind of stuff? Did a little bit of that in algebra, maybe? Okay, so... Let's see. So um, we're graphing two things on the same axis. Hmm, what do you think? <laughs> okay. Um, okay, one of them is 2 to the x minus 3, and the other one is just 2 to the x. Let me, let me give you a couple simple observations and then some more detail. First off, notice they're both exponential, meaning they're... They're not a U-shape, right? Neither one is a U-shape. No way to option C, right? They're not a straight line. No way to option B. It's either A or D, huh? And in both cases, the base is a, posit a number bigger than 1, right? There's the base. This is the base. Both cases, the base is bigger than 1. I don't care about the power. Remember what we learned. When the base is bigger than 1, whatever the power is, doesn't matter. When the base is bigger than 1, it rises. They both rise. They both have bases bigger than 1. So what's the graph with both rising? Well, yeah, I've already answered it, huh? I did the question earlier. It's already checked there for you. But um, I did that during my lunch. Yeah, it's got to be that one. 
That's the only graph with both rising, right? You good with that much? It's not this one where one of them's falling or this one where one of them's falling. No. They both have a B that value that's bigger than one. So they're both rising. Now, having said that, let me give you a little more detail. What what does what what does that x minus three thing do? I mean, what does it do to have that up there in the power zone instead of just a regular x? Do you know a little bit about graphs and how they shift around? You're not going to be required to know much about this. But simply put, when you put a little minus 3 on x, it actually moves it the opposite of what you would think. Instead of left, it's right 3. x has an opposite effect. So it grabs the graph and moves it to the right 3. That's what's been done right here. See how this graph is to the right? That's what that does is move that graph to the right. Anyway, you don't have to know a lot of detail about it. You could tell which one it was even without that. But that's what it does. All right. Okay, so this time they've got 2x and the minus 3 is on the base level instead of in the power. Do you see the difference between this one and the last one? Very similar except they've brought that minus 3 down to the base level instead of being up in the power. But, you know, can you guys tell, even without all the fancy reasoning of exactly what that minus 3 does in the base instead of being the power, can you tell me which answer it is with, without even looking at that? Yeah, they're both rising again. It's, it's the only one where they're both rising. They still both have a B, B is the base, that's bigger than 1. They're both rising to the right. It's got to be that. Anyway, so you don't have to know all the details here. That minus 3 on the base level, that moves it down 3. The reason that one moves it down 3 instead of right 3 is because it's on the base level. It's not, it's not right next to x. It doesn't have an x effect. It doesn't have a right-left effect. It has an up-down effect. Anyway, we're not going to get into all that detail. That's pre-calculus if you're interested in all that. But we're not, we're not doing that. I'll just say they're both going up. It's option B. If you, if you want to know more detail than that, you, you, you can use graphing calculator during the test. You can get the detail. We're not, I'm not going to say any more than that. I mean, if you grab me after class if you're interested, but I won't require on the test you to know those things about, oh, it's up by the X, it's right, left. It's, you know, that's pre-calculus. Not required. Okay, so they're giving me f of x equals a to the x. And they're telling me f of 3, plug in 3 for x, and it'll equal 8. Let me hold up there for a minute. Do you see what I'm doing there? <clears throat> they told me. They gave me the general setup, f of x is a. So now they're using a instead of b. Don't let that throw you off, guys. They'll change that. I wish they wouldn't do that, but they do in their explanation, so I'll have to go with it. Um, it it's the same as b to the x. It's no different at all. It's the same as if they said b to the x. They're just calling the base a now instead of b. It's just a name, right? It's like calling your friend Joseph or Joe. You know, it's the same thing. It's just going by a different name. It's the same setup, right? So some kind of base, they're calling it A, to the x power. And then they're saying, hey, plug in, plug in 3. So I plugged in 3, and that's x. So I put that 3 in the x slot, and it'll equal 8. So I plugged in 3 and said it's equal to 8. They told me. When you plug in 3, it's equal to 8. So I plugged in 3, it's equal to 8. Good so far? Now, what am Okay, great. So what? What am I supposed to do with it? <coughs> well, eventually we have to find f of 2. We'll get there. But first, we could now solve this for a. Couldn't we? You with me? Could I take this little equation right here, a cubed equals a, a 8, and solve for a? What's a? Yeah, 2. What to the third power is 8? Well, 2. 2 to the third power is 8, right? Oops. So, A is 2. 
See how I came up with that? I kind of solved it by observation. I didn't, you could do the cube root of both sides. That's technically, but I think it's easier just to say, look, A is clearly two, right? Are we okay with that? Am I saying things that are clear that aren't really clear? Right? What to the third power? What times itself do you write? Two to the third power. Two times two times two. Two times two is four times two is eight. So it's two. So A is two. Okay, great. So what? Well, that means that our function right here, f of x equals a to the x, get kind of scribbly there, now we know is, hmm, well, oh, I'm all over the place. So <laughs> let me clean this up, grab the wrong little pen thing. Now we know this a to the x is 2 to the x because we know what a is. So this is like a two-phase problem. Let me help you. Yeah, maybe that'll, this is phase one. Phase one, find A. So in the first part of the problem, you do the work to get your hands on A. And then once you've got that, you start over again with the function, and now you know what A is, so you put that in, and then you finish the question. What do you mean finish? Well, they asked me to find F of 2. Can I find F of 2 now? Now, it's 2 to the X. Now, put the 2 in for X. 2 to the 2, final answer is 4. Are you guys okay with that noise? Okay? Let me know. I, I can shut the door if you really want, but it'll probably get a little, little more stuffy if I do. All right. Is that okay there? So everybody see what happens. So, in, so I took that little equation, a to the x. In phase one, I took the information they gave me, f of 3 is 8. Kind of covered up there. So and I plugged in 3 and set it equal to 8, solved for a. And I said, okay, now I know what a is. Start with the function again. Now I know what a is, a is 2, and now plug in 2. Plug in 2 for x, 2 to the 2 is 4. So it's finding the exponential function, the base, and then plugging in a 2. All right. Okay, so here we go. f of x is a to the x. Again, they're, they're showing us a general exponential function because x is in the power zone, the exponent zone. That's why we call that an exponential function. Okay. And then they're saying, hey, it's got the point 249. Hmm, what can we do with that? It's got the point 249. Yeah, with the 2 is x, and what's the 49? That's the y. Remember, f of x is the same as y, huh? So the, so the 49 goes there, the 2 goes there. Everybody seeing that? They're telling me x is 2 when y is 49. If the point 249 is one of the dots on the graph, remember the membership requirement for being on a graph is that you make the equation true. So when they tell me 249 is on the graph, I put the 2 in for x, the 49 in for y, functions are always y. And now I can solve for a, can't I? <clears throat> what to the second power is 49? What does A have to be there? It's got to be 7. You can just square root both sides, huh? A is 7. So, okay, so what's my answer? Is my answer just 7? Yeah, because notice what they say. Um, they want me to give an equation. They say, give an equation of this form. So, in other words, the answer is something like a to the x, something in that form. Now I know a is 7, so it's 7 to the x. That's what they want me to type in. They want me to type in the whole exponential function, which I now know a, so it's 7 to the x. So we just found the exponential function by using the point that was on the graph. Are we good with that? So we're doing a lot of different things with exponential functions, back and forth, back and forth. All right. So although it looks bad, I think it's just a plug-in. <clears throat> a equals C 1 plus, what is that, R to the X. And then they pretty much just tell you everything to plug in, I think. Let's see. C is 200. Um, R is 
19%. What do I do with 19%? 0 0.19. Yeah, 0.19. X is 18, yeah. So it's just like that. So, I, so just use your calculator. You guys have your calculator? On the calculator, you would type in 200 times parenthesis 1 plus 0.19 to the power 18 and hit equals. But, well, that's generally on most calculators what would, what would work. This, this right here is a power button. Some calculators, it's x to the y. Some of them, it's an up arrow. It depends on the calculator. That's how you do power 18. Do you guys have that or one of those type of buttons? And we should be able to get an answer. Anybody got it? How we doing? Two eighty three point two two. Yeah, what they say? Round to the nearest hundredth. Yeah, that's the hundredth place. Two places. Yeah, it's cent nearest cent. Two hundred eighty three dollars and twenty two cents. Looks reasonable. Anybody else getting that same answer? Can we have a verification on that? Yeah, you got it. So you get the same answer. Okay, good. So it looks like it's right. Is that okay on that? Questions I can answer? Let's just plug them in and hit the buttons on the calculator. All right. Okay. The number of cell phone accounts in a certain county has increased exponentially for the last decade. The number of cell phone accounts in millions in this country, um, oh, certain, this is country, country can be approximated by the following function. Estimate the number of cell phone accounts in 2007. Okay. So they're saying f of x equals 110.8e to the power is that 0.125x? Okay, yeah, there's a decimal. Tiny little decimal. Okay. So there it is. X corresponds to 2,000. X corresponds to 1,000. So, and the question is, what was the approximate number of cell phone accounts in 2007? So if X stands for the year 2000, like it says right here. Oh, no, that's not right. Let me try that again. So if X equals zero is the year 2000, that's what they said, then what's going to work for the year 2007? Well, it's got to be X is seven more, huh? You guys with me? How are we doing? It's making sense. So all I've got to do is plug in 7 to that function and hit the buttons on my calculator. Right? So they're giving me this little key. X is 0 is 2,000. So if they're asking me 2007, X must be 7. 7 years later. Right? So that means take that 7 and plug it in. So it's 110.8 e to the 0.125 times 7. Can you do that on your calculator? Let's try that because this, this can get a little tricky. There are certain things you need to do and not do. So that's why I'm saying if you already have your graphing calculator, I really encourage you to bring it and because um, there is a, some skill to knowing how to, knowing how to do that. You don't want to just show up the, at the exam not having done these on your calculator before. So, um, do you know where the E key is on your calculators? Can you find that? So, on most calculators here, I'll, I'll write out how it'll go on most calculators. It's 110.8 times, and then there's an E button. E to the X button. You got to hit that, and then, then and you got to put parentheses. Yeah, yeah, I should make note of that. 
times 7 equals. Yeah, does everybody see what I'm doing there? So write that out. That's how it will happen on the calculator. Give you a second. Copy that down. How are we doing? So, notice I put parentheses around the point 0.125 times 7. I didn't put parentheses around the 7, even though they had it kind of here. I didn't do that with my calculator. Remember what I told you? You guys never forget anything I say, right? I talk at you for four hours a week. Um, on the um, calculator, if there's more than one thing in a zone, in a region, that be numerator, denominator, or power. See how we have two things up there in that region? You've got to parenthesize them. If you don't put those parentheses on there, if you just typed it into your calculator without, without this parentheses right here, if you just typed it in like that, it would only do the E to the point one, two, five, and then it would put the 7 down on the baseline. It wouldn't know they're both up in the power. Does that make sense? You've got to tell it to put it all up there. So you put parentheses around this, and then it knows all that stuff goes together. Now, that's, that's only if you have the old-style calculators that lay everything flat, like I do. But if you have the nice ones that, like, show the jump up into the power zone, well, then great. You don't need to do anything. You don't need any parentheses. It knows right where everything is. It's all good. So it just depends on your calculator. Anybody getting an answer there? Anybody, anybody? Yeah, how much do they want? They want um, thousands. Yeah, th I need one more spot. Eight, zero. Oh, there is, it was originally 7.95. Oh. oh, okay. So it was, it was 7.95 what? Three. Three. So this is the thousands. So look, one to the right, it's uh, less than five, so we'll round it to 7.95. Yeah, see how they said round to the nearest thousand? Oh, no, no, thousand, not thousand. Am I getting confused? The nearest thousand because the accounts are millions, so it's 265 million. Oh, yes, you're right. I'm getting confused. There were approximately blank cell phones in 2007. Yeah, this, this is in millions. So there's this. That's, that's confusing when they do that, huh? Let me, let me help with that. Okay, you guys tracking so far? You're right. I didn't even notice that. You're looking more carefully than I am. Let me back up here and explain all that very carefully now that I'm looking at it. Yeah, over here they say thousand, and you're right. Up here they said millions. That's, I wish they would. I'm not going to try to trick you that way on the test. I won't play these kind of games. But let me, let me show you what they're saying. This is our answer, but it is in millions. Why? How do I know? Because they said right up here that this formula is in millions. Okay? Okay, so what? So that's 265 million. So that really means it's 265 million, 795,000. Does that make sense? That's really what that answer is. That's what you have to type in. That's the nearest thousand. Because the net, what was the next digit? It was two or three or something. So we round down to 5,000. Because, yeah, it was three, 300, but 300 rounds, you know. 5,300 is, 5,300 is closer to 5,000 than it is to 6,000. You seeing, you seeing how I did that? I know that rounding stuff can be a little tricky, right? So Because the next digit was a three. So I stop here. There it is. Questions on that? So I won't do that kind of thing. Right, where, where I do that on the on the test. I won't be testing that on the test like that. I mean, I mean, I'll give you this kind of question, but I won't be doing the thousand million thing like that, back and forth. All right, that had a little trickery. Okay, so they give me this function. This is the amount of plutonium remaining after from one kilogram after X years is given by that function. How much will be left after 4,000 years, 8,000 years, 15,000 years? So for all those questions, you just plug in because X is the years. So if they say 4,000 years, they're saying X is 4,000. 
plug in 4,000. Does that make sense? You see how I'm following that? Units are helpful. You know, I used to, before I took physics, I used to not like units. I think they were kind of annoyed me. But then when I took physics and had all these word problems everywhere, I learned that units really helped me to know what to do. That's kind of true to a lesser degree in this class as well. X is years. Pay attention to that. So 4,000 is years. So that's X, huh? So X is 4,000. Plug it in. So I just need to plug it in. So let's, let's write out that formula. Make it a little bigger here. So it's... 2 to the minus x over 24,360. And so now we plug in the 4,000. So we get 2 to the minus 4,000 over 24,360. And then that's just hit the buttons on your calculator. That's easier said than done. Notice I have more than one thing in the power zone, don't I? So what does that mean I need to do? Parenthesize it, right? So it's going to be 2 to the power of negative 4,000 divided by 24,360. Everybody says that's how you type it in, at least if the calculator does everything flat instead of showing the power. So that's going to be a super small number. Has anybody got it? I don't know. Not, not super small. It'll be one point something. No, it'll be under. It'll be under one. It'll be point, zero point something. It's as much as I know. 89242. 89242? Eight, two, two? How far do they want? They don't say. Oh, uh, round to two decimal places. So we'll say 0.89. Anybody else getting that same answer? Yeah, getting that, 0.89. A yeah. lot of calculator stuff here. We good? You know, if you're going to get a graphing calculator, I think the Casios are cheaper than the TIs, and they'll do everything. For whatever reason, the TIs have just become popular, and they're great, but the Casios are just as great. So Casios are like 50 bucks, I think, and TIs are like 100 bucks for the graphing calculators. Feel free to get a Casio. I'll help you with anything to, so you can do all the stuff. It's, it, it's just as good. Or you can try to rent one next Thursday. Question? Do, do something funny? Yeah. Yeah, let me see. I have it the same way that you're doing it. Oh, oh. See how your parentheses is closing the fourth? It needs to be at the back. Oh, okay. Because that way, yeah. Good, good. Yeah, so you, we don't want to close the parentheses here. This will be for everybody. It's easy. I, it's easy to take me. Because you got to put it here. That way, this whole group is is two's power. Is the power on the two. On that. That should work. Any other questions? It's a good question. Other questions on that? So grab me before and after class. You know, that's why I really encourage you. Bring some kind of calculator. Even if you're just doing it now, use your cell phone or use whatever. Make sure you can get these because this is your homework. And feel free to you know, get, grab me now, grab me whenever. Let's get this straight so that you don't leave here and have no idea whether you can get these answers or not. <coughs> Good. Is that okay? Is that making sense? All right. Here, let's do that. Let me... Start on a fresh screen, and let's do D. Yeah, so, so B and C would be the same, right? B, we, just, we did part A, plug in the 4,000. Part B is plug in the 8,000 for X. Part C, plug in the 15,000 for X. Same thing. A, B, and C are all the same. I mean, they're pretty calculator intensive, but they're all the same. Just plug them into your calculator. And now D is different. Estimate how long it will take for one kilogram to decay to half its original weight. This is, you know, uh, exponential decay, like how <laughs> chemicals decay. So how are we going to do that? How long will it take for one kilogram to decay to half its original weight? Well, if it started out at one kilogram, what's half that? Half a kilogram or 0.5, right? So you want to basically say, now, is that X? Should, does that mean I should do X is 0.5? Should I plug 0.5 in for X? No. 
What, how do I know? What is X? Years. Yeah, never lose the units. That's how I survived physics. I would read these crazy word problems. I'd kind of get a little dizzy, and i go, oh, my goodness, I had no idea. And then someone's like, oh, yeah, the X is this, and the Y is that. And I kind of, oh, yeah, and this is, you know, I'd stuff them in, and a lot of times good things would happen, right? So um, pay attention to the units. You'll keep yourself from a lot of mistakes. X is years. So 0.5 is not years. It's weight. So I don't want to do that. That's not right. So let's get rid of that. It's not x. Well, then what is 0.5? It's the w. It's the weight. So it's the whole function. In other words, the 2 to the minus x over 24,360 thing, the whole thing equals 0.5. Does that make sense? The whole thing equals 0.5, not the x. The weight. The whole function is the weight, right? The w is the whole function. The whole function you want to be a half, don't you? Okay. Well, that's awful ugly. So I need to solve this equation for x. You ever solved anything that ugly? Okay, I'm going to give you two ways. I don't care how you do it in a test. I'll show you a by hand method um, that has a little trick to it. Um, and then I'll say you can just do it in your graphing calculator, and I'll show you how to do that. We're going to do a lot of that in the next section, um, which I better get moving to, um, using the graphing. Yeah, in fact, um, yeah. Let me show you the by hand quick, and then, I, then I'll get to the graphing calculator. So the by hand, here's, it's a trick. You would, this is what Math Excel shows. It's a little trick. They go, okay, hey, um, I can't make that 360. I can't get to the trick. 0.5 is the same as a half, isn't it? And a half is 2 to the minus 1 power. Do you know that trick? Do you remember negative powers from Algebra 2? 2 to the negative 1. Negative powers flip things. Do you remember that trickery? So 2 to the negative 1 is a half. Okay, so what? Well, now they both have a 2 base. 2 to something is equaling 2 to something. So what does that mean? That something must equal that something. Or 2 to 1 of them wouldn't equal 2 to the other if they were different. Right? See the trickery? If 2 to something is equaling 2 to something else, well, then those powers must be equal, or 2 to 1 of them wouldn't equal 2 to the other. Once you made the bases the same, the powers have to be equal. Okay, so what? Well, then you take the negative x over 24,360 equals negative 1. You just cut out the 2s. The powers have to be equal. And now you can solve for x. How? By multiplying by negative 24,360 on both sides, because it'll cancel, and the two negatives will make positive, and that's positive 24,360. So that was some sleight of hand mathematics kind of there. Did you see that? Did you like that? <laughs> Maybe not so much, huh? Maybe not so much. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what they intend for you to do on that problem. I, rather than show the graphing calculator on this one, I'll show it on some other ones. That's what they have in the explanation for that one. That's kind of advanced. All right, I'll leave that. Feel free to watch it over later. Okay, so there we go. So they're, they're giving me a function, f of t equals 78.7 plus 1.1 to the t power. Is it times? Oh, it is. Thank you. Thank you. You're right. Times 1.1 to the t power. Thank you. Yeah, and then, then notice what they say right there, they, those little words down there. They say t equals 3 is 2003, therefore what's 2005? See how they do the scheme with the years and the variable? So if, if t equals, they're right there, they say t equals 3 corresponds to 2003, then what is 2005 going to be? Five. T five. equals 5, right? So t is just that however many years after 2000, isn't it? Are you catching that point? I don't want to race too fast past that. That's really, really important to understand, right? When they tell me 
T equals 3 corresponds to 2003. I am to understand T is the number of years after 2000. So when they come in with their question and ask me about 2005, I go, oh, you mean T is 5. Because T, again, is the number of years after 2005. So, okay, so what? So you take that T equals 5 and you plug it in. So 78.7 times 1.1 to the 5. Hit the buttons on your calculator. I've said that a couple times. Times 1.1 to the power of 5 equals. You really don't need to put anything in parentheses because there's never more than one item in a zone. There's not two things in the power zone or two things in a numerator or two things in the denominator. So no parentheses are needed. You get the idea about when you need parentheses on a calculator? It's just when there's more than one item in a zone. So um, <clears throat> I'm guessing the answer is in the 80s or 90s or something. Maybe, maybe it's 100. I don't know. One more time. 126.747. Boy, it got that big, huh? Uh, round to two decimal places. So we'll say 126.75. Anybody else get that same answer? Okay. Is that okay? You guys able to get that on your calculators? Questions I can answer? I'm gonna, oh, and the other ones are the same. 2008, you would just plug in T equals 8. Um, 2014, you'd plug in T is 14. Parts B and part C are the same thing. Just plug into the same, into the T slot and hit the buttons on your calculator. Okay, U.S. Census Bureau predicts that the population of a certain group will increase from 34.9 million in 2000 to 94.2 million in 2050. Find the ex an exponential function of the form y0 b to the t for this data in which t equals 0 corresponds to 2000 and f of t is in millions. Okay, so this is where the fun begins. This is where they get more challenging. So we're going to have to do these in two phases. So, so first off, they're giving me the general... That f of t... Um, I'm just going to call that y. I hope, I hope I'm making it easier for you by doing that and not more complex. It's just, you know, the functions are just your y values. They're giving me y0, b to the t. b is the base. Okay. Basically, um, first thing they tell me, t equals 0 is the year 2000. So let's write that down. T equals 0 is the year 2000. So when they tell me this fact, that there were 34.9 million in the year 2000, they're telling me this means 34.9 when T was 0. That's what that means, huh? Let me slow down there for a minute. Are you catching that? See how I'm grabbing these words? When T is 0 is 2,000. So when they tell me 34.9 million in 2,000, that's 34.9 when T is 0. Because T is 0 is 2,000. Right? So that means if I take this little formula then, and I put in T is 0, the Y should be 34.9. That's what that's telling me. A couple things I might need to say to help you. Don't, don't be thrown off by this zero that's down low. It's a subscript, like a submarine is down low. We call that a subscript. Y sub zero. They're going to start using that all the time. 
Whenever they do that, y sub 0, or in any science formula, business or science formula, whenever they have a low 0 like that, that always means the same thing. It means y at time 0, or initial starting y. Initial or starting y. That's what it means. y sub 0 means the y value, in this case population, at time 0, at the start of this little situation we're talking about. Does that make sense? They'll do that all the time. Biology formulas, chemistry formulas, business formulas. They'll have a sub-zero on something. So again, that zero is not plugged in. It's, it's, we don't do anything with it. It just sits there. It's just decorative. But it, it's decorative with a meaning. It mean, When you see it, you should think, oh, that's the Y value at zero. That's what they're telling us. That represents, that stands for the Y value initially at time zero. Well, what is the Y? And what is, I keep talking about Y. What is y? Well, y is just my way of saying the population. Right? The two things we're talking about here are the time and the population. At what time was the population this? Right? At certain times, we're getting certain populations. So the, the relationship that that equation is it, it connect, the relationship connects time with population. Okay. So look at this little work I just did here. 34.9 equals what? What's, what's b to the 0 power? What's anything to the 0 power? One. Do you know that? If you're rusty on that, use your calculator. Anything to the zero power is one. It's one. So what? What does that mean? That means 34.9 is y zero, meaning the initial. Y, remember what is y zero? Starting population. Initial population is 34.9. Well, actually, I knew that. I really didn't need to do all that work, did I? I did it. I could have known that right here. 34.9. Is, is the population when time is zero. So of course that's y zero, which is fine. You just want to read that and go, hey, that's, so now I know y zero. So now, so that's like, maybe this will be a three phase. So that's like phase one. I've got my hands on y zero. So now, write the equation again, y zero, b to the t. Get this out of the way. And I know y zero now. Y zero is the 34.9. So we're to there. We good so far? I did all that work to get my hands on y0, and it really wasn't necessary, huh? From now on, can we just look and say, hey, whatever, whatever number they give me at t0, that's y0. Population at time 0, that's y0. And I'll just plug it in there, and I won't do this. Is that OK? So let's, let me get a new page and just do that. So. Okay, so let's just do that. So again, so y equals y0, b to the t, and right away I'm going to look at this fact and go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So 34.9 million at time 0. So that means this is y sub 0. Okay, so that's just automatic. I won't even call that a phase. That's just plug it in right away. Now we're really ready for phase 1. Phase 1 is find B. It's all about finding B. How do I find B? Well, use the information they give you, which is actually right here. 94.2 million in the year 2050. So this population of this uh, United States, um, a certain group, certain group grew to 94.2 million in the year 2050. 94.2 million in the year 2050. So that means, if I bring it up here, if I take y equals 34, whoops, getting a little scribbly there, 34.9 b to the t, and it's 94.2 million, is that what that was? It was 94.2, yeah, 94.2 million. When T is what? 50. Yeah, not 2050, but 50, right? Because remember, T is just the years after 2000, right? Remember they said that over here? T equals 0 is 2000. So T equals 50 is 2050. So you guys see what I just did there? The first thing I did was identify Y0. That's the starting population. And then I said, okay, 94.2 million. Y is always the population, isn't it? Y, the, the thing in the front, call it f of t, call it y, whatever, it's the population. So 
that population when t is 50. So now I have an equation I can find b. That's what phase one's all about. Get your hands on b. So I can solve for b now. How do I solve that little equation for b? Well, start by dividing by the 34.9. Boom. And I'm going to need a calculator. 94.2. Divided by 34.9. Would you, could I use your calculator? Yeah. I should have brought mine with me. Oh, I just dropped yours, sorry. It's okay. I hope it is okay. Yeah, it looks like it's fine. All right, so 2.699, 69914, oh, Let's use a bunch of bunch of numbers. Okay, now what do I do to find B? You raise both sides to the one fiftieth power. Or the fiftieth root, if you're familiar with that. So here's where we're getting we're getting a little fancy algebraically. This is where I start losing people. Doesn't need to be. You can make it through this class, but you're going to have to put some time into these kind of algebra steps. I'm glad to help. The tutor will be glad to help. Look over these YouTubes. Does everybody see what I'm doing? I'm getting rid of this 50 power by raising both sides to 150. Or you could do the 50th root. It's the same thing. Might just be easier to see it this way. These, you know, 50 over 50 makes 1. That's just B to the 1 or B. That turns it into plain, regular B, which is what I want. I want to find B. The other side, you just do that on your calculator. You just take that answer you just got and you raise it. If you have a graphing calculator, if you just hit the up arrow now, it'll take the last answer and automatically raise it. It's real nice. They're real user-friendly. To the power, 2.69914. Oh, wait, wait. I'm getting confused. To the 150th. What am I doing? What am I doing? I'm totally lost. All right. <coughs> to the one fiftieth. All right. Now, when you when you do this, guys, let me let me write this here. Two point six nine nine one four zero oh, four zero oh, one to the power. Remember, you've got to put parentheses around the one fiftieth, because that's more than one item in a power zone. That's a one and a 50 in the power zone. You've got to put, that's, I didn't write that very neatly, but you've got to put parentheses around that 1 50th. And hit equals, I'm getting 1.020057162. It's still on the screen, yeah, barely. Like that. You guys getting that okay? You have your calculator that'll do that. So that's B, that we're not done yet. That's the end of phase one. We got our hands on B. Or is that what they want me to type in in phase one? Uh, da -da -da. Find exponential function of the form. Oh, yeah, that's all they want. Okay, good. This one, and the other ones, they'll then ask us to do something with that. But this one, all they want is that function, and they say use integers, decimals, Round to the nearest, what does it say? Can't read that. Six decimal places as you do the problem. Interme all intermediate values. But how many for the answer? Oh, use integers or decimals. So how much, how many chakras does it want in the final answer? I don't know. Well, it says that for intermediate values. It says round to the nearest six decimal places as something or other. As ne oh, round to the nearest six decimal places as needed. Round all intermediate values to six decimal places as needed. All right, yeah, I guess it does want it all six. So, yeah, so the final answer then, the final answer to this question, it's the formula um, y, y0... B to the T. So what was Y0? 34.9. B is that 1.020057 to the T. 
So it wants me to round B to those six. Six decimals. So there's the answer. There's the exponential function. How's that feeling? Is that okay? This is where I separate the men from the boys. Sorry, ladies, but you know what I mean, right? I mean, I'm glad to help. I don't mean to say that as a discouraging word. You can make it, but you won't make it casually. It's, it's got to be putting some time into this. This isn't like sociology class or something, right? And I'm not putting those, I, you know, some of those people think I'm, I'm not being prideful or I, I love history. If I do again, I do history. I'm just saying this is intense, right? My daughter's taking a bunch of math, and she went ten, attended an English class yesterday. She said it was so great. She has Calc 2 right now, but then she took English. She's like, it's great. You just talk about stuff, and you relax, you know, whereas Calc 2, it's bang, 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 and you're feeling stressed out. So this is math class, so you've got to put some time into this. It won't come to the casual. All right, let's go to another. Start this one and we'll finish it next time. Because there's a bunch of these that are all kind of so what we just did, you're, they're going to basically have you do that same thing for the last seven problems, somewhat. So, and plus, graph some tricky graphing calculator too. So, this won't be due. We're not going to finish, but we will do it next week. And so, let's, let's do one more, at least the beginning of it. So, what does it say here? It's got this big old table about different years and purchasing power. And it says, look, here's the keywords. Use the first and the last data points to find an exponential function. What's the first? These together make the first. Those two together make the last. In 1983, the purchasing power was 1.06. In 1995, the purchasing power was 0.50. What's going on here is real life. This is how math is used in the real world. So real world, this is a bunch of data, right? that represents, I don't know what it is, some kind of purchasing power for some kind of product or society or whatever. And what people would do in the real world is they would take a bunch of data, a bunch of record like that, and they would say, okay, I'm going to take the first data point, 1983, and I'm going to take the last data point, 1995, and I'm going to fit an exponential curve to them. That's basically what we're about. I'm not going to show a picture, I'm not, you know, but I'm just giving you the picture behind the scenes. That's what's really happening. We're taking two dots on a graph, so to speak, and we're going to fit an exponential curve to them. All right, that's, the, that's what we're about the business of doing here. And, um, all right. <laughs> I think I'm done. Well, good thing, my, my pen's done and class is over. So we, we will stop there, but we're forced to. I guess my pencil's, oh wait. Oh no, I just had it unscrewed. <laughs> I'm so lame with technology. I just had it too unscrewed. <laughs> So anyway, but we're out of time anyway. So we'll do more of that next time and finish that up. All right.